Okay, honestly, I wasn't expecting this phone to be this good. Like usually, Vivo launches three major phones in India. X series, which is usually the flagship known for really good camera. V series, which is sort of mid-range. Y or series T, which is usually 10 to 25,000 budget category. But hold on. And imagine, if you close your eyes and think of a Vivo phone, what comes to your mind? Like really good selfies, in fact, color changing back. Also, flash in selfie camera. And it's not a dream. All of this is true. But wish they made a phone with good camera like X-Series and good performance like Series T. That's what audience like you and me want. Enter Vivo V40 and V40 Pro and hold on. Hold on to your keyboard. This is a surprise. This video is going to be an interesting one. Let's go. Now, before we proceed further, these are the things that you get inside the box. You get the phone, a case, some paperwork, a 80 watt fast charger, Type-A to Type-C cable. So whatever you need is inside the box. Now, mostly we'll be covering the Vivo V40 Pro and most of the specs are quite similar with Vivo V40. But wherever necessary, I'll mention the differences so you have an idea of both the phones. Now, there are three interesting things that you should know about the Vivo V40 series. But apart from that, there's also the usual stuff that you expect. It's the build of the phone, it has a glass back, it feels quite light in hands, it weighs around 193-194 grams. In terms of glass protection, it comes with short alpha screen. Also, you see the design when light falls on the back. If I tilt the phone in different angles, you can see this wavy texture. The V40 Pro comes in these colors and the V40 comes in these colors. Now, design choices are subjective, but what is not is this. You get a 120Hz AMOLED display and this time around both the Vivo V40 series come with stereo speakers. Yes, it's here finally. Long wait. So I was re-watching the Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. I especially found the colors to be more punchy when compared to other phones and the sharpness and all is quite on point. And there is support for HDR on Netflix and YouTube as well. And outdoors also the display is quite visible. Since the display is curved on all sides, it feels like you're holding all display in hands. It has a peak brightness of 4500 nits and 1200 nits of HBM. It's good to see that brands have started mentioning HBM along with peak brightness. Finally, after so many videos, they listened to Team TechVisor. Another update this year is both smartphones have IP68 water resistance which is a good welcome upgrade at least it gives you a peace of mind if your phone goes chapak in water. So overall the upgrades in display, speaker, IP resistance is good. Another aspect which is upgraded this year is performance. This year on the Vivo V40 Pro you get Dimensity 9200 plus 8GB RAM, 256GB storage. Now again processor names are confusing and for a reason but Dimensity 9200 plus is closer to Snapdragon 8s Gen 3. Even if you see benchmarks like Antutu scores, it scores around 15.24 lakhs which is again quite similar to 8s Gen 3. Even in Geekbench the scores are good. We also ran the CPU throttling test and the graph if you see it's not completely green here but still for a slim phone that's good but then time and time again we have seen smartphone bands tricking benchmark apps and scoring huge numbers so we really wanted to see does it perform like the snapdragon 8s gen 3 in real life so we picked up the video editing app took up the same video footage edited it the same way and exported the video at the same time now this test helps us not only understand the performance but even how fast the storage is and if you see it more or less performs similar to phones launched with snapdragon 8s gen 3 in 45 to 50 thousand so from a performance point of view you get really good performance here. The younger Vivo V40 comes with Snapdragon 7 Gen 3, 8 GB RAM and 128 GB storage for the base variant. Now, after all of this, I thought camera might be the place where there could be cost cutting. But in fact, the hardware specs or in terms of camera are pretty great. And more importantly, the cameras have the same tuning as the flagship X series by Zeiss. And just like previous V series phones, this also comes with the Aura light and it is quite different. So if you see side by side photo clip with flash and photo clip using the Aura light, the Aura light photo here looks so good as the light is quite soft. Plus you get a light temperature adjust option so you can click pictures using this from light colors to warm colors like this depending on the lighting situations. And in the portrait mode you get some good options like if you tap on this small Zeiss circle you get different options for different types of Zeiss style background blurs like you have cine flare so if you click pictures in bright light then choose this option and it adds a cinematic flare in the background. Make sure you have a sun in the background as well. Then you have another option called Distagon background blur in which it adds hexagon flares and it gives best results when clicking portrait pictures indoors. Also the 50 megapixel ultra wide angle camera takes good photos in daylight as well as indoor lighting conditions. Also, you get a 50 megapixel 2x telephoto camera. In terms of videos, you can shoot in 4K 60 FPS, and this is how the video and mic quality is. And even the selfies from it come out quite good, like the color, sharpness, light control, all of it is very good. Even in the portrait mode pictures, the edge detection and everything is on point, and I think selfies are Vivo's. 40 and strong suit, so it was quite expected. And on the base Vivo V40, these are the camera specs. And there is a 50 megapixel group selfie camera, which is also tuned by Zeiss. But the good thing is, 
it can record in 4K 60fps. So overall, the camera performance of previous V series phones have been retained over here and you get a very solid set of cameras on both the Vivo V series phone, especially the V40. Now, before we get to the conclusion, the Vivo V40 series comes with the latest Android 14 out of the box running on the FunTouch OS 14. And it seems like Vivo has optimized the FunTouch OS here quite well. As you can see, the app animations or the overall animations on the UI are pretty fast and smooth and you do get some amount of customization options like changing the fingerprint unlock icon or changing the charging animation and all of that. Also, you get some pre-installed third-party apps which if you don't like, you can always uninstall. In terms of battery, you get 5500 mAh battery on both the devices and in my usage of clicking quite a lot of pictures, videos, scrolling through Instagram, gaming two times a day, it easily lasted a full day on a single charge. And speaking of charging, it supports 80 watt of fast charging, charger included in the box and it takes about 40 to 45 minutes to charge 100%. So, what's the conclusion here? See the Vivo V40 Pro starts at 49999 without bank offers and everything. Vivo V40 starts at 34999 again without bank offers and everything. And usually Vivo V series phones are priced slightly premium. The Vivo V40 Pro goes on sale on 13th August. Vivo V40 goes on sale on 19th August. And here's what I have noticed. The whole selling point of Vivo being camera-centric phones have started working now when the overall phone is good. Let it be their any series phone, even their X series or even this V40 series, if you see, they almost get the basics right. Beginning from having a good design, good display, stereo speakers, even good performance to having a solid camera. And this is just not me saying. We recently read an article about Indian smartphone sales. The smartphone sales in India are at an all-time high, meaning we Indians are buying premium phones. And another thing if you see in this article, Vivo has surpassed Apple in India in terms of revenue. A good enough reason for that is people are buying Vivo phones and they're buying the premium ones. But I feel software is one aspect if Vivo can polish their front touch UI or even if they can bring their global origin OS here to the Indian devices, that would also be good. Let us know what are your thoughts on the Vivo V40 series. On that note, this is Pratik, TechWiser, signing off. See you pretty soon. Pew -pew.